Okay. Calculate the limit as x approaches 3 of absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3. And again, I'm going to give you two minutes to do this problem. Now, I don't necessarily think you're going to solve it, but in these two, let's say like two and a half minutes, two, two and a half minutes, try to kind of discover what is weird about this limit or try to discover what strategy you might use to calculate the limit. So you can use a graphing calculator. You can use a table of values. I try to figure out like some intuition about what's happening with this limit. Okay. I don't necessarily believe that you will calculate the limit, but try to get, just try to discover on your own what's going on here. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you can also use Wolfram Alpha, which I will demonstrate to you after this. Oh, you'll be happy to know Canvas is officially official. All SAS courses must be transitioned to Canvas by the end of fall 2022. About damn time. Wait, so then like, what about like Sakai? Or it's like going that? away, it's gone. Oh, okay, so good. Fall, fall 2022, it'll be gone. It was supposed to happen this year. Yes, Alex. <laughs> it, was last, it was supposed to happen last year, to be honest. But anyways, do this problem. Don't worry about Sakai or Canvas. Yeah, Canvas is a lot better. Team Canvas. To not have to log into like 20 websites just to access all the resources everything on canvas is a dream come true yeah you know some some courses out there don't even use canvas or sakai or blackboard are any of you in physics 203 maybe maybe probably not actually because if you're in physics 203 you're probably be in 151 google classroom no 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 no, no. please no, no no let's use let's use things that actually work Canvas and Zoom are perfectly fine. Okay, so what did you think about this? Yeah, his website is from like the 1990s. Like you expect to go there and it like have like flashing text and like some some like MP3 of like an old 90s song playing or something, and like his top five friends. Okay, so what did you think about for? Well, none of not, oh, actually all of you are way too young to even know what MySpace is. I think. Was the old Facebook? I mean, maybe it's the old Facebook. Yeah, maybe you heard about it in like your history class, but yeah. Okay. So, what do we think about for this um, question? 
I used a graphing calculator. You used a graphing calculator. What did you notice, Caitlin, on your graph? It was two lines like this. And then at it was two three, lines like this. And then at three, it was like stopped. So it was like a limit. Okay. Not really. It was like right, two. It's undefined. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. This <laughs> this function's undefined at x equals three, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see. So Kaylin is completely correct, right? So let's look at this. This is wolframalpha.com. So let's plot y equals absolute value x minus three divided by x minus three. And let's try to get around x equals three. So from x equals one, let's say from x equals one to x equals five. Press enter. And this is what we get. It takes a second. So Caleb's completely correct, right? The graph of this function looks like two line, uh, two straight lines, right? We have this constant at negative one and then a constant at one, and it seems to kind of transition at x equals three. Now, strictly speaking, this function is not defined at x equals three, right? So Wolfram Alpha doesn't show you, but there should be an open hole at each of the endpoints of these two lines, or there should be an open hole. Okay. So what does this graph suggest to you? So first of all, what does it suggest to you is the answer to this limit? Undefined. Undefi <laughs> undefined. Yeah. We usually say it does not exist for limits. But yeah, &E. the limit doesn't, D and E, right. So what strategy are we going to use to show that the limit doesn't exist? The table. Why isn't it one? The table, why isn't it one? Well, because it looks like, well, actually that's kind of the question I'm asking. The, the limit doesn't exist. Can someone tell us why? So Bhatia kind of has it, one-sided limits, right? The left limit looks to be negative one, right? If I'm approaching x equals three from the left, all my y values are negative one. If I'm approaching x equals three, first of all, do you see my mouse cursor? I always forget what gets shared. You see the mouse cursor, right? Okay. And as x goes to three from the right side, all my y values are one. And one and negative one don't match up, right? They would have to come to the same point for there to be a limit. So this suggests using one-sided limits. And I think what Justin said is completely correct, right? Turn this into a piecewise defined function. So now let's go back to the presentation. Oops. Okay. So let's recall what the absolute value function is. The absolute value function is kind of this sneaky thing. We use a special symbol for it, but it really is a piecewise defined function. All right, what are the two pieces of absolute value of X? So, one piece is if x is greater than or equal to zero. And the other piece is if x is negative, right? Absolute value has a different definition depending on whether x is negative or positive. Sarah, can you tell me? Uh oh, she didn't think I'd call on her. I just saw a webcam go out. That wasn't Sarah, but no, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, he called on me, he like stopped the webcam. Uh, Sarah, if absolute, if X is already a positive number, what can you say about absolute value of X? Can you write down a simpler expression for absolute value of X? Um, I mean, I don't explain it. If X... There's no explanation. I just want an expression. X is already positive. So absolute value of X is? X. X. Yes. That's it. That's all I was looking for. So there's no explanation. Now, Daphne, you're having a grand old time laughing at other people's misery and being called on. So now let's have you experience it. I am not laughing at anybody else. I'm I know, laughing. I know you're not. We're just <laughs> laughing at the situation. I know. No one, no one laughs at each other. I know. Um, so, but Daphne, I'm still calling on you. Don't think just because. Oh, uh, no. Please don't. <laughs> okay, now you get, the, you get the harder one. If X is a negative number, what is absolute value of X equal to? Uh, Think about it. So if x is equal to negative 3, what is the absolute value of negative 3, Daphne? 3. 3. What is the absolute value of negative 7? Seven? 7. 7. OK. So if x is already negative, how did you get 3 from negative 3? Because of the um, absolute value. 
Yeah, um, but how did you actually get the three? Does someone else want to? Let's let's save Daphne. Yeah, please, <laughs> please. Be, uh, um, like, like the negative. Yeah, negative X. Negative X. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the reason why I kind of um, went over this is we're going to do with the absolute value again later when we do horizontal asymptotes. So it's kind of it's very important that you understand that absolute value of X is a piecewise defined function. And the main thing is you can remove the absolute value bars. If the inside of the absolute value is positive, you don't need the bars. If the inside is negative, you can remove the bars, but you need another factor of negative one, right? Why is that factor of negative one there? Because the end result has to be positive. So if X was already a negative number, you need another factor of negative one to force the whole thing to be positive. That's why that factor of negative one is there. Now, how does that help us with our problem? Well, our problem has absolute value of x minus 3. So what happens? We know that everything just shifts over to the right by 3 units. So if x is bigger than or equal to 3, oops. So again, let's think about this. If x is bigger than or equal to 3, that means x minus 3 is positive. And like Sarah told us, that means that the thing is already positive. You don't need the absolute value bars. It's just whatever is already there. So this is x minus 3. And like Daphne told us with some help, if x is less than 3, that means x minus 3 is already a negative number. And like what Harris just wrote in chat, I get negative x plus 3. In other words, I get a negative on the whole thing. I, I remove the absolute value bars, but I have to put a negative on the whole expression. Right? It's important that you understand here, in this context right here, let me use the orange highlighter. x is less than 3, so that means x minus 3 is negative. So that's why we need another negative one to make it positive. OK, so now let's do one-sided limits. So x equals 3 is the transition point of, of absolute value of x minus 3. So we use one-sided limits. And we're going to go a little bit faster through this since we've already kind of seen the idea. All right, left limit and right limit. Okay. So limit as x approaches 3 from the left of absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3. OK, so how do we argue with this? OK, this is how we argue. We say, let's look at the limit symbol. This, The limit symbol is always the most important thing in these problems, right? Because it tells us what's going on. The limit symbol in this case tells us x is less than 3. right? Or x minus 3 is negative. And so we know if x minus 3 is negative, right, if the inside of the absolute value, if I'm taking the absolute value of a number that's already negative, right, I can remove the absolute value. So absolute value of x minus 3 equals, I can just remove the absolute value, but x minus 3 is negative, so I need another factor of negative 1 to force it to be positive. Now, the reason why I have to do this is because these things don't cancel out, right? Absolute value does not play well with algebra, right? Like any, it's kind of like the sine or cosine, like nothing comes in, nothing comes out, right? So that's the reason why I want to actually go through all these details, because once you're able to do that, once you're able to say, OK, in this particular context, x is less than 3, so I can replace the numerator with negative x minus 3, now that's really good because now I have algebra. Now I can actually just cross out those factors. But I was not able to do that algebra before because I still had the absolute value bars.
And now the rest of the problem is easy. Because what am I left with? I'm left with just a factor of negative 1. And the limit of a constant is just the constant itself. So I just get the limit of negative 1 is negative 1. That's it. It's fun because I saw on the camera, I saw a few students have kind of a light bulb moment. That's great. That's like the teachers, that's the teachers like crack. Like that's what we live for. Like, oh yes, that light bulb moment. I guess they're learning. <laughs> yes, they got it. Now let's look at the right limit. It's very, very similar, the right limit. Except now, how, what we're going to say? We're going to say, okay, now that I'm approaching three from the right, this means now that x is bigger than three. In other words, x minus three is positive. So that means in this particular limit, right? Forget about the first limit. Forget about the left limit. Forget about that, right? In this particular limit, I'm taking the absolute value of a positive number, and I know that if I'm taking the absolute value of a positive number, you don't need the absolute value. It's the same exact number. Right? So absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to just x minus 3. And so now I can replace that here. And now I have algebra. Now that I don't have the absolute value bars, I can use algebra. Everything cancels out, and I get 1. And the limit of a constant is the constant. So those are the two, the left limit and the right limit on the, same, on the screen at the same time. So once we conclude, the limit doesn't exist. And in fact, we see exactly what we saw on the graph, right? From the left, we had uh, a constant of negative 1, right? This is what Caitlin was describing. From the left, we have a, a, a y value of negative 1. From the right, we have a y value of 1, and they don't match up, right? This is exactly what we saw on the graph. But now we've kind of um, confirmed it analytically. So in example four, would the limit also not exist because the left side isn't equal to the right? Yes. In fact, I did, I did write that at the very end. Maybe you just missed it. But okay. yes, it, yeah. Thank you. Any other so, questions? Uh, yeah, one more thing. So if we got negative one for the right limit also. That means the limit would be negative one. That's right. Okay, so good question. So if we had happened to get, say, negative 1 for the left limit and negative 1 for the right limit, like Oscar says, then we can conclude the limit does exist and it equals negative 1. Okay. So sometimes that does happen. I'm just in these particular cases, it didn't. So for these, we're basically just proving that why the limit does not exist. That's right. In these two particular limits, in, uh, you're proving why it doesn't exist. That's right. Okay. So they only exist if both are equal to one. Yeah, so you get limit does not exist if the so if the left and right limits are not equal, the overall limit does not exist. Okay, I got it. If the two if the left and right limits are equal to each other, then the mm -hmm. overall limit does exist and is equal to whatever that common value was. Okay, gotcha. Yep. On a test or quiz, should we um like write why the limit doesn't exist? Or is it just, or saying DNA is sufficient enough? I think you should write whatever you think. This is how you should generally write things. You should write things in this class as if you were explaining something to a student who's like a B level student. They kind of know what's going on in the class, and they're doing pretty well, but they stumble on a few things. And so you need to explain to that student enough so that they get what you're doing. I think in your case, if you just wrote this, I think that's good enough, right? Because it's very clear that, okay, negative one and one are not the same, so therefore the limit doesn't exist. Okay. But that's kind of a good rule of thumb to keep in the back of your mind, right? Try to explain this to a B-level student in the class, and that's about as much as you really have to write. <laughs>